two, one. Hi, I'm Ethan Becker, and uh, I'm the president and chief designer of Becker Knife and Tool. And I've been loafing around the woods since I was about five or six years old, and that was um, well over a half a century ago. And I'd like to share a little bit of what I've been able to figure out over the years. And this today we're going to talk about batoning, um, or I like to think of it as clubbing. <clears throat> I like club better than baton, but um, that um, is a, a matter of taste. One of the things that people tend to do is to baton things that they really shouldn't expend the energy on. If you have a choice between batoning a relatively straight and straight grained non-knotty piece of wood, uh, this will process very easily down into very small kindling or uh, planks or whatever else you need. This is going to be a horrible waste of time. Make this one into little things and put this one on the fire. It will save the knife, it will save energy, and it will save a lot of frustration. Um, one of the things that um, a lot of people, but most of us have spent a lot, life to, spent a lot of time in the woods, have tried to split things by whacking them. If you insist on doing that, you've got this little, you've got your little finger and your etc. This is a recipe for yeah, a lot of blood. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that if you take a little stick and use it, because this is tippy on both both ends. Okay, you can use the stick to hold this and you won't have any problem. And I also want to talk briefly about what I call re what people call reading the log. If we're going to baton this piece, we want to find the weaknesses in the bolt, which is what this is. A piece of log. So if I take the knife and I go here, I'm not exploiting the weaknesses that the log tells me are there. And it tells me by this line and these lines right here. And that's true if you're using an axe and you're splitting a lot of firewood, whatever. But always read the log, try and find the weaknesses and the weaknesses are, will cause this one, as a for instance, to just go away right now. If we're going to use a club or a baton, this is, um, I'm going to wonder what exactly, because this is for my hand, it's just about perfect. And we're looking at one and three quarters, one and a half to one and three quarters. If, um, if I'm starting off to begin with in the woods, I'm going to look for a piece like this that's about this long. And I'm going to make a digging stick at this end. And I can use it as for self-defense. Or I can use it uh, as, as a baton. And then I want one that's more convenient, about this size. But we're going to take this one and use a relatively small knife to um, to make it into pieces. Split wood, split kindling. And again, I don't know whether you can, we can get honed in here, but here are, there's almost a star pattern here of, of, of weaknesses. So this is about as much of, uh, you want at least that much to, uh, on the other side. Hit directly,
never twist the knife. If you run into a knot, frequently, the, uh, and especially if it's a complex knot or very hard, the edge of the steel will actually bend to conform to the inconsistencies in the knot and stress the steel to the point where if you hit it again, you will get a chip or a breakout. And it doesn't make a difference what you use as a club. And when you get to small pieces, you can actually generally start with your hand. But we're got, we've got too much flex in that for that to work. Not every technique works every time. So we're good. Um, this is um, kind of the minimum really length of knife that I think is sensible to have with you. Um, this is one of my uh, Neckers. It's a great little knife. Um, it's thick enough that it will take plenty of punishment. Um, and it's uh, small enough that you can either wear it easily around your neck, either up, down, or in the pocket. But the biggest thing to remember is never get your little pinkies and stuff where you're likely to be whacking at them. Um, it hurts. You got a tippy? Make sure that your you've got a reasonably stable base, and you'll note that I'm hitting straight down whenever possible. When you get way down this small, um, if you have a reasonably sturdy tip on your knife, you can either do one of two things. You can baton into it, the side, and then exploit that weakness that you've created by doing a slight twist. If you have a delicate tip on your on your blade, don't do this. It will probably mean that you will break the knife the tip eventually. Come here, you little devil. There we go. But I have found best to to process things down until you have little itty bitty tiny slivers when I'm starting a fire. I've had very bad luck with leaves and other detritus. I want to get to here, then I want to make a fuzz stick or a lot of shavings. <clears throat> This is still a little green, but I want a whole lot of little stuff like that. And then if I'm using um, a lighter, I want to get a stick going. If I'm using a, a fire steel, then I want um, a lot of fluff. And this is too green to really show um, the fluff properly. But you can, let's see, I've got a piece of crummy old um, stuff here. And if necessary, you can use that to get build a bunch of that stuff up to catch your flame. But the biggest thing is, is once you get into, into, the, into the thing, if you're batonic, do not twist the knife because um, that is likely to cause problems. 
So anyway, I hope this has been of some help to you. And, um, and have a lot of fun when you go out there and loaf around in the woods.